I, I know you're trying to lay the rails down, Silent, as to what the requirements of a discussion must be in a civil you know, manner. But no, not, no, we are not going to engage Harry, until you damage. put your dick on the table. Whoa, if you don't whoa. put your dick on the table, this is just we're not going to we're not we can't measure dicks if you're not going to put your dick table. Wait, are you a Christian, Lucky, or not? It. Wait, hold on. I have a question. About this analogy. I have a question. I, I will give you an answer. Where? You know, I have a question for Lucky, the Lucky guy. Where in the Bible does it say that there's a separation it, not, between Christians who who, who have, a, have a vision and Christians who don't? There's no biblical basis for that. Is I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I, I went off of Kathleen saying it's certainly the Bible, if I had studied it, it would show that the majority of them did not, and I can <laughs> I'm saying I concur with Has that. Has studied the so, Bible? So now, I, now I'm an authority. Did y'all get that? I, I Did just y'all get that? You. Now I'm an authority. I'm I just authority. said, based on what you said, that said, once again, nothing about my interactions with the Bible or reading no, it. you yeah. said hey. I haven't studied the Bible. You think guys, we hey, wouldn't... Hey, guys, look, Shadow, just, just here's the thing, right? Until he answers the question of whether he not he's a Christian or not, we just got to ignore him. Yeah. Oh, well, that makes it convenient for you, so go ahead and carry on. Anyone else have something to talk about? Yeah, if Lucky Kathleen, wants to go fetch... Uh, well, I don't know, yeah, Lucky just needs... It's Lucky pretty, pretty good. Uh, Luke, like, my, my day is great now, because the, the heavens have opened up and it is raining, and since this forest fire outside of my house has still been burning for the last three days, it is finally out. Lucky man, this I'm, this sorry. Uh, I'm, Kathleen, I'm how sorry. How do you feel? You, you, you Kathleen, lost. How show a scripture where it shows that that there's so, two no no i uh i uh i don't i'm not making a claim either way but i just oh, boy, uh, due to a lack of evidence that uh a natural process exists i don't believe in natural process oh god no no uh, no okay, no that's no. relevant uh yo kath kath well, you, well i'm trying to start a new conversation what are you trying to do what is it wait, wait, what, what was it I what up, brian? yeah Fr oh. brian is an insane person you might enjoy him kathleen no, I, mean, I, I listened no. to Fry and talk about free will for like forty minutes, and I didn't. I and I don't. Have no, no, we need taste us to talk to Fry and. Yes, so, yes, 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 oh, yes. Oh, okay. Well, well now, that I'm might just, be entertaining. No, about I'm IQ, just, about IQ and intelligence, please, please. No, no, please. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about like that. How I just can't see how a non-conscious agent, or uh, how a process can be created without a non-conscious uh, agent. Uh, talking about free will, yeah. evidence yeah. of a process being created without a conscious agent? I, uh, Fry and free will doesn't exist. Well, I mean, I, I'm, we can talk about that, but like, uh, what's the evidence that determinism exists? Uh, because, you, because you don't have free will because the Bible says you don't. Where does well, the Bible I, say you don't have free will? Who, who makes the you Bible? You have record? agency. You have agency. Yeah. Right? Bible you have record? will. You do not have free will because God has has ordained everything to happen in his desire for his purposes from his will how can uh how can we need, Bible we need a little bit like of john john john, john. <laughs> tasteless will you, uh, how can the bible be corrected if it's written by Jesus? tasteless will you uh will you, will no. you talk to uh, no I, I will pass no 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 i want to hear john john it's been they already too talked long. what Yo, what up, I don't want to. Uh, what up, blood? How are you, son? Uh, um, I think Fryan agrees with you, though. It's not it, gonna be. It's not probably. gonna be confrontation. Yeah, well, what's the point of a debate with someone you agree with? Like, no, no, no. I just want you guys to come to an understanding about each other's position. I've already talked to Tasteless. I, I, I would like to show some. I would like if someone. I mean, because I don't. I haven't decided either way. I would like someone to show me evidence. How can I? Uh, if a, uh, if a uh, natural uh, process actually exists. Look, or let me if, uh, let me just. Uh, I'll give from you the a, setup. Right. Prime, prime, prime. So you believe in free will, right? Oh yeah, I believe free will. Right. Tasteless, you also believe in free will, right? What up, blood? Same as so. I said. So, Ryan, can you tell Texas why you believe in free will? Uh, because determinism can be proven not to be a uh, real thing. What? Determinator what? You're, you're far away from your mic again. Determinism can be shown not to be an absolute thing in the universe. Uh, do you agree with that, Texas? 
Of course. <laughs> you agree with that. Okay, sure. keep going, Brian. We're good so far. I mean, I would like, I would like to talk about. You're you're far away from your microphone again. You keep forgetting for some reason. Maybe you should just scotch tape it to your phone. I would like to, I would like to talk about the belief that you uh, process can be created without a conscious agent. Well, free ahead. will, free will is a thing. If you're a Christian, you got to believe in free will. It's in the Bible. Well, there's another person who said he's a Christian and he doesn't believe in free will. Yeah, no, so free will is not in the Bible. Hosea, Hosea, fourteen. Is free will Versus. not in the Bible? No, free will is cool. There's a difference between free will and will. Hold up. Ah. So what is the, uh, what's the difference is between it? will and free will? I think free okay, will is so just uh, Christian. He needs to take down. the mic out of his mouth. So, oh well, so Brian, Brian has some audio problems. The difference would be, okay, so here's the difference, right? Do you understand yes. the difference between autonomy and agency? Well, what I'm saying is, if determinism is anything external of the will, can you right, just answer my question? Why would, will, why would free will have to be exerted? Why can, wouldn't can I, can, will? Can you just answer my question? Do you understand the difference between autonomy and agency? Yeah, but what I, that's not what I'm, I'm trying to ask here. I'm trying to ask if uh, determinism means pretty much anything external of the will of a person to make a decision, right? Why would we say free will? Why not just will? Okay, so so okay, like uninhibited, so, but all right, God, right? The triune God has free will. He is autonomous. Triune? His, what do you mean by triune? His you mean creation. You mean his cre No, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But right? men can't get. Let's not get pedantic. So so let's let's, not, let's, let's not let's, get pedantic. Let's think let's about Let's not this. get pedantic. Now hold on, I'm going to finish. My point. I want to talk about the triune after your point. Now, God's creations, specifically humans, have agency, okay? You have the ability to make a choice. So, for instance, let's just take it down to the most mundane thing. You have an apple and a banana in front of you. You will make whoa, a whoa. choice to, to – you will and, – and, and, and you – choose to eat the apple you have made a choice what if i choose to walk away all right or, or you choose to walk away whatever right whatever choice you make you have made that choice but you could make no choice other than that which was ordained for god's divine purposes so you're you saying mean, because so i mean wouldn't that uh make god your i guess the Yespa or Yahweh or however you want to put it, or Elohim, uh, a corporate in the Garden of Eden. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I, I I had really hard time understanding. I I heard you say, "Wouldn't that make God?" And then I really couldn't understand what you said. How Wouldn't that make God a corporate, a corporate in uh, the a Garden of Eden? Culprit? A, a culprit. A culprit. A culprit in the Garden of Eden. So when, uh, so are you? So let, let me let me hash this out. So I think what you're trying to say is because so, God ordains everything for His divine purposes, Adam chose to be disobedient, but Adam Adam's disobedience was ordained by God. Is that what you're saying? Why the was Adam's disobedience? Yes. When did that? When why did that was Adam? Wait, 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 wait. I have I have a question. I have a question. Why was Adam's disobedience ordained by God if God's purpose was for man to live forever on Earth? In the Genesis uh, account. Be be because if man did not have will, we would simply be autonomatons. And we therefore we could with... not have therefore we could not have the personal relationship with God that God desired of us. Yes, we, we have... had to have the ability to either obey or disobey in order to <laughs> fulfill what God wanted us to be, which was a being with the ability to have an interpersonal relationship with the creator. Yes. How do we know that God is but the creator? Saying that, so, basically, the creator. so basically what you're saying, let, let, let's cut this down in the most simple way to state it without, because I feel like you're throwing me through loops here. Um, uh, simple way to state this. Do humans, when they choose between an apple or an orange, is that a choice? Or is God choosing it for them? 
the most simple It is one. a choice. Okay, so then humans have free will. That's no. basically what you're saying. No. No. It okay. does not logically follow. They had a choice in which food they, which food they ate. They okay, so absolutely had a choice. But they could not have chosen in any way other than what God had ordained for okay. his divine okay. purposes. Okay, so let's look, let me, I, look, let me, let me hold on. Let me hold on, just real quick. Let me, let me I understand. I, hold on, just real quick. I, and I don't mean to, I understand that this is like, like, difficult to comprehend, right? Because it would appear no. that 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 there is a that there's a free choice being made. No, no, right? no, 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 it's not well, that. Let me just, it's, no, let me just get it's not where you're coming from. Let me let me just course. get where you're coming from. Um so you're saying that we have a choice, but God will not let us choose anything other than what he wants. Is that what you it's not that it's not that God will not let us it's that God has ordained everything for his purpose. So, what, all right, so a great way to look at this. Let, so, all right, so, and I use this, hold on, so real quick. You, may, you might understand this better. You might understand this better. I use this a lot with, with this discussion. Have you ever seen the second Matrix, Matrix Reloaded? I actually haven't seen the second Matrix. Uh, okay, I so there's a... There's a there's a part about the about the middle of the way where where uh, Neo has to go see the Oracle again, okay? And the Oracle is in a basketball court sitting on a bench, and, and Neo approaches, yeah. and Neo's pissed off at the Oracle right now, right? And Neo goes, you know, she said, "Have a seat," and he said, oh, "I think I'm just going to stand." And then he says, "But you know, if I was going to stand or if I was going to sit, I'm just going to sit, right?" And on and on with this, I I don't know what you know, what you don't know, kind of thing, right? Yeah. And and Neo's trying to understand something, and the Oracle looks at Neo and he says, "You cannot see past a choice which you do not understand. You have already made all the choices that you are going to make." It is not your job to make the choice. It is your job to understand why you made the choice. That is a uh, that 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 scene is a perfect explanation for the understanding of God's divine purposes inside agency and will. You have so, already made all, you've already made your choice. You've already so made it. The, wouldn't that disprove that Jesus was the first? Can you fix because your mic, please? So, if so it's why, so, game, so, that this hold on. Can I, I? I just need a second to punch out my somebody used a Matrix movie to make a theological philosophical <laughs> point on my bingo card. Uh, so, <laughs> so my, my thing is, wouldn't that tempt? Wouldn't that prove that Jesus wasn't tempted in the uh, desert? Because that is straight fact. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, because if he was, why, why would that he was never going to be tempted, why? like because of his preordained. Then, like, the no, 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 there's a difference problem. between no, 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 you, yeah, you're, 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 you're adding, you're yeah. adding something in there that I did not add. You are adding pre ordination. I did not say pre ordination, I said ordination. Absolutely, Christ was tempted. The better question, the better, the better question to ask is not whether or not Christ was tempted, the better question to ask is, is it possible for Christ to have sin? All right? That's the more pertinent question to ask. Well, God, if he's God, how can he sin? He's not God, though. Well, some people believe that. He, well, he, he, he was he, both God and man, fully how, how, mortal and fully okay, divine. I have, I, have, I have a few questions for you on that subject. He was dead. He was sacrificed. Right, he, he died. He was he was um he was killed as a ransom sacrifice. Yet yes, he was he was dead for three days. Was God was God gone for three days? Uh, no, God was not gone for three days. But Jesus was killed for three days. His mortal, no, they his the mortal, third day. his mortal body. He did not die. His mortal body died, and his essence his divinity his soul whatever you want to call it descended into hades not hell hades for three days and on the third day he rose and ascended to heaven where does it say where does it say that jesus's soul is in hades 
Yeah, yeah. Can I have a scripture on that, please? That was divine revelation, my friend. It does. I think I have that script because it does talk about the three days he battled in Hades or hell, whatever you want. I'm to call pretty it. sure that's John Milton. That's not scripture. Um. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Another expression of his shell of theology, if it's Milton. Lay, lay your bets, guys. All right. It's not scripture. I know scripture. Bingo. Yeah. Um, uh, didn't the people check three days later and he was gone? Or that's someone got um, banned, right? You know, he lasted dead by, by three days. I mean, how was it? Sell us. Uh, you know, here's the thing. Here's the I thing. don't know some of these the words. Trinity, the Trinity doctrine. That he, 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 Jesus is God's son. Did someone not get banned or am I in trouble? Is that's, a, that's, what, that's what the Trinitarian the says problem. Is that he was dead for three days. Like, if Jesus was God, why would he pray to himself if he was the private Oh, area. someone got There's reported. All right. Okay, Here good. you go. Here's, 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 here's where it comes from. Okay. I want to see this. Picture. For I handed you off before, for I handed on to you as of first importance when I turned, had received. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day accordance with the, in accordance with the scripture. How do we know the Bible? So, obviously, so, means that so, means so, that the soul was in Hades. How do where's what? Hades? How do how do we know uh, the Bible? So, is so well, so all right. So wait a second. Now, this is where you have to understand how to interpret the bible you have to so what there's so a couple places this, we go to right so is. so one of the places so so well, hold on one of the, the uh look. well for that that's first corinthians 15 3 through 4 first corinthians all right 15 what 15 it? 3 through 4 now there's a couple of places we go to these things so the first most direct and obvious place we would go to is the story of jonah okay that is that is the most obvious place that we go to is the story of jonah jonah is a metaphorical prophecy of Christ's death. Okay, that's what the book of Jonah is there for. It is a prelimination of what would happen to Christ. We can also go to Isaiah. We can also go to Daniel. We can so, also go to Jacob. We can also go to da uh, to uh, David. And we can also go to Genesis and Exodus. So you, don't think, about... you, don't, you don't think Jonah actually actually happened uh no but i don't i don't know so i mean let's i mean let's just grant you uh that jonah and the whales analogy for jesus i think that's 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 likely sure why not fine what does that have to do with jesus going to hades like why is a whale's gut hades yeah, it, it's there's metaphor, no... mate it's metaphor I, yeah, no, jonah, no, i understand it's metaphor that's why i just said I, i'm granting right, that it's metaphor right. Hold okay, on, so but on, then me, you would hold on, hold on a second. I just, I just want to point this out, right? Because you sound like totally exasperated that I don't understand this is metaphor. I get it, right? Jonah and the whale. You know, Jonah was in the whale for three days. Jesus was dead for three days. I get it. That's a metaphor. But why is the whale's gut Hades in this metaphor? Because no the whale's gut. Because Hades is no, all right. So you have to understand the Pentateuch first. You have to understand that. There are different levels here. So we have Shoal and Abaddon, which are different parts of Hades. Okay. Abaddon okay. being what we would know as hell, Sheol would we be known as the holding place. Okay, Christ well, well. could not have descended into hell because he was sinless. So he went to the holding place. He went to Sheol. Where, what does where, this have where, to do with Jonah and the whale? Hades. No, no, again, again. What does that do with Jonah Where are all these levels laid out in the scriptures? Man, why, why, I, this is what irritates me is that I just constantly have to give, you know, Cherry pick an associated exegesis. Kathleen, Kathleen, <laughs> Kathleen, you know how I feel about you. I, I love you to death, but I just, I don't think this is well supported. I think, I think you got this from Milton. And I think you're just trying to. No, I don't even know who Milton every, is. Every statement said. Oh, I don't even, about, I didn't even know. I don't even know who Mil Milton is, by the way. Right, you, do, you wouldn't have had to get this from Milton. You got this from somebody else who got it from Milton. Right? About, this, about, this idea that Jesus, Jesus died and went to Hades. Uh, for three days that's that that's a that's something from paradise lost that's not scriptural 
Okay, so uh, actually, no, it, it, it's absolutely not. Right. Now, I don't, I, now, wait a second. I don't know about Paradise Lost again. I don't even know what that is. Right, but Sheol is translated. Yeah. Sheol is translated in the Septuagint for Hades, right? So, for instance, in Acts twenty-two, two twenty-five and twenty-seven, where Peter quotes from Psalm sixteen ten, and the Greek word Hades was used for the Hebrew word Sheol. It is a common term used for the grave, as in Isaiah 14, 11, and the place of the dead, both the righteous, Psalms 33, and Ecclesiastes 9, 10, and the wicked, Psalms 9, 17. It is also described as being in, uh, being in the earth beneath the lower parts of the earth, in the heart of the earth, such as found in, Deuter in Numbers 16, 30 through 33, Deuteronomy 32, 22, Isaiah 7, 11, Ezekiel 31, 14, 16, 18, 32, 18, 21, 24, Matthew 12, 40, and Ephesians 4 through 9. Is isn't that Gehenna, enough scriptural backing? Isn't isn't Gehenna a trash, a burning pit of trash? Yes, Gehenna. Ge yeah, Gehenna. Look, it's just burning. Ecclesiastes nine ten. Yeah, but but what I'm saying, Gehenna is, is is talked about in a place of hell too. So wouldn't that mean that like the other words are not real places? So when, when they speak at Gehenna, yes, they are speaking of, it was using symbology. Gehenna was a place of eternal fire, right? Because that's where the Jews would go and grow all their trash. And they just kept piling it up and kept burning and burning and burning. Isn't hell a real place underneath the Vatican as well? Like a physical place? That you <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. It's a Look temple. This. It's an old temple yeah. that they still oh, have up. And it's open that. to the public. You can actually visit it. They didn't tear it down. Right now, now real quick to finish this up, Abaddon, right, is the Hebrew term, right, is the Hebrew term for destruction, right? It's found in Job's and Psalm and a couple other places, right? And it is the destruction that is often associated with Sheol, once again vividly spoken of in Job and Proverbs, and sometimes referred to as death, once again in Job and Psalms. Right, Isn't Abaddon Job a, uh, is also the name of the angel of the abyss, as found in Revelation nine, verse eleven. Right, a third portion of Hades, which is a temporary abode for the fallen angels, as found in Luke and Revelation. Right, I I don't make I, I don't Honestly, use, I like when, when I say something. Look at this, look I this. have all the biblical backing that I need to make these statements. Look at this. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that's gonna get all you guys against me. But yeah, I think uh, Kathleen is correct here. Where is the biblical basis for hell? Please explain. Like like I, I everything I read. No, I, I agree. I think no. I mean, in, in, there is how no. How do you pronounce hell. your name? Are you JW? It's it's just don't even just just call me Brendan. Are you um, JW? Brendan, right. No, Brian, Brendan. I I completely agree. Right. I, I think everything that Kathleen just said right now is actually like pretty good scriptural support for like people uh, like have totally mistranslated what hell is hell is a, is like a garbage room. hell is a place you go That's after it. you're dead because it's, you don't exist anymore hey hold on now hold on you didn't ask me what my definition of hell was I never yeah, gave you my definition of yeah, hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm not. Hold I'm not on, talking to you, Kathleen. I'm talking to Brendan. I mean, I, hey, can I ask a question? I agree Wait. very strongly with Brendan. It's it's kind of controversial. Can I, can I ask a question? Some, I, just, I just I just think there's a lot of hold on real quick. I just think there's a lot of scriptural support for what Brendan is saying. Hell isn't a place. It's it's death. It's non-existence. Yeah. It's just, just, hey, and, and, and even Catherine, and even afterlife uh, in general is not supported by the Bible. Can I ask hey, a you. can I ask you a question, Kathleen? Yeah. Sure. I want to. Uh, no, it was for Catherine, the uh, religious guy. The. Uh, the, in the Revelation, it says that hell will give up his dead, and the sea will give up his Don't dead. Don't you mean religious you, woman? If you, so, if, you, if you die in the sea, why wouldn't you be given up when hell give up his dead? So, so, he, so look, I, I'm not a uh, authority on Revelation by any stretch of the imagination. It's the one book that I really have no ability to speak on because... Honestly, it's really hard for me to understand because it's written in kind of a Gnostic text, right? Text. But what we have to understand, one of the things we have to understand, right, is a lot of words that we use in the English are not direct one-to-one -one translations of words that we would find in Greek or Hebrew, right? So oftentimes when people are referring to hell, what they're meaning to say is Abaddon, right? Hell right is an english word and it has been given this kind of metaphorical view 
based on Catholic Apocrypha, right? right? So if you were to ask me what my understanding of hell was, in the understanding of what the biblical references to are, meaning uh, Abaddon, then I would say it is a place where the absence of God is all encompassing after death that you and now you know truly that God exists and you can never be in his presence. It is absolute spiritual and physical torture because of the divergence of the fact that you now know that God is real and you can never, ever, ever sit with him. Okay, okay now so let me, let there's me, a lot of oh, 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 interesting oh, 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 Everybody, everybody hold up. I want to read a scripture real quick and then ask your opinion on this. It's Ecclesiastes 9, verses 5 and 6. It says, For the living know they will die, but the dead know nothing at all, nor do they have any more reward, because all memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love, their hate, and their jealousy have already perished. They no longer have any share in what is done under the sun. That sounds like what I'm trying to make a point is. It, like, so the, this, this, bit, this is right from the Bible. And this is literally right. saying, when you die, you're dead. So There's hold nothing. on. Let, hold on. Let me, let me read this real quick. Because I don't just take verses. I take the whole chapter and the whole book. So hold on. Just, no, just I mean, and Brennan, I agree. Like this, this also makes a lot of sense of, of stuff like in Adam and Eve when it says, surely in this day you will die, um, is, is the, is the, I, I think, the sense that like, no, no, sorry, it's not in Adam and Eve. It's this idea about um, the chuff and the wheat, right, being separated. The chuff doesn't, like, burn forever, right? Uh, it's burned off and it stops again. Yeah, the wheat, the a lot of... The separation of the wheat, of the wheat and the weeds. My translation says um, weeds instead of tough, I think. Um, yeah, the, 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 you're talking about the parable Jesus gave? Yeah. Hey, right, what, yeah, yeah. what was the verses? Uh, what was the uh, verses that you quoted? Is 9 verses 5 and 6. Five and six. Okay, rule. Okay. Okay, so I, I I would like to ask a question. So in real All right, so my this is speaking of mortal death, not spiritual death. What, what's the difference? What, what's the difference? The, mortal the, the difference. The, the, so the difference being that yeah, once you die, you're dead, right? In the understanding that your mortal body is dead, it will decay and turn into fertilizer. But your spirit, but Kathleen, does can I stop not you? Die. Hold Kathleen, on, that, that doesn't make any sense because your your mortal no, body doesn't know things. Your soul knows things. Your soul facts, believes right things. Well, hold on. So here's here's a here's a problem with what you're saying. Like we can see that Sheol, Gehenna, Tartarus, all of them refer to the common grave or or a pit in the ground. And you're just saying that like uh, what you just said goes with it. And even the uh, Revelations, I think, was it? Uh, let me see. So. Revelation yeah, twenty thirteen so, says the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. So I mean, wouldn't that mean? Wouldn't that mean that Hades, aka hell, is just the common grave, and it was a, a big misunderstanding through uh, a cult following? So I again, I I I I'm going to be completely honest with you here. I don't know, right? Because I I I've never studied Revelation well, to the extent that I need. The prophecy of the rising from the graves. This isn't a just revelation. This it's, is a just revelation. Re it's a resurrection. It's a resurrection of the dead on but, earth. But hold on, let me let me let me just get back to Ecclesiastes real quick, right? Because there's a cut. See, this is why it is important to understand the contextual nature and basis of the scriptures. So the first thing we have to know is who wrote Ecclesiastes, right? It was Solomon. Now, all of Solomon's writings are books of wisdom. Right. And Solomon speaks a lot of earthly things. Right. Especially in this chapter and in the concordance, what we understand. Right. And this is a great summation of it. The death puts a final period to all of our employments and enjoyments in this world is what we find in verses four through six. Whence he infers that it is our wisdom to enjoy the comforts of life and mind the business of life. While it lasts, Solomon is specifically speaking here of our mortal existence and not our eternal existence. Wait, what's that is the why context is king. For That's the assuming you have them. <laughs> Damn it. What is the verse that you're... Four through six. Four through six. Four through the six. ones that you gave me. Four says Aren't there is hope for whoever is among the living because a live dog is better off than a dead lion. Verse five. For the living know they will die at dead nothing at all. What I read. To you, are we in a box? 
Four says there is hope for who is living. Because a live dog is better off than a dead lion. Where does it say he's talking about physical stuff and not spiritual stuff? The spirit, there's, there's the, 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 like, like he said, that your soul is just you. Okay, no... but you have to understand the context of the chapter, what it was written to, right? You can't just cherry pick a verse and assume that it means something. You have to understand one. Look, the Kathleen, entirety you're no longer of the allowed to say the... context. You have to just bring up the wrong, why it's wrong in context, okay? I, I, I'll say context I'm, I'm all I want. I'm just sick I'm and tired an, of hearing I, you say context for five minutes and then finally trying to get away from explaining how it's wrong via is, context. It, just explain Solomon, why it's wrong Solomon, via context. Solomon was it's, granted, okay, so Solomon fine. Was it's granted wrong, his wisdom by God. By, it by is God. wrong in the context that? that Ecclesiastes 9 is specifically speaking of the vanity of this world. That is what yes. like the verse speaking of the vanity of this world not the eternal world but this frail uh uh, uh what what's what's the other what's the distinction the difference between that that's called your eisegesis uh, your eisegesis Leo, projecting your meaning onto text and your cherry uh, you, you making your no, association yeah uh, lucky lucky you, you, you don't you don't get to have an opinion you don't get to have an opinion lucky oh, i think i do i think i did i think i do no, you don't no Thank you. you don't you don't get to have an opinion you don't get to have an opinion until you no lucky you don't get to have an opinion until you answer the affirmative question of whether or not you're christian or not until then sit that, down as if that man as if as if, as if, it's still your exegesis and eisegesis, just second class Christian. Back to you. Hey, uh, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? You can ask any question you All want. All right, so I would like to ask this question. Um, there's earlier writings, and this uh, right here, it says the Babylonian uh, recognized two principal races, the Adamu and or dark race, and the Sharku, or light race. Probably in the same manner, the two races are mentioned in Genesis, the sons of Adam and the sons of God. Now, my thing is, this comes out of the older cuneiform text, and this is the, uh, uh, one of the quotes of the person who uh, translated the cuneiform text for Oxford uh, University or whatever. And the, but my thing is, if he's saying Adam refers to a race and the sons of God, also the etymology of it refers to a, race, a different other race, wouldn't that mean that everyone inherits the sin of Adam? Yeah, everyone does inherit the sin of Adam. We all well, have I mean, sin. According, um, to this, according to this, it wouldn't. Because if uh, okay, I, you have no genetic uh, lineage from that particular group, then you wouldn't have inherited the sin of Adam. So, Wait, since when is Adam a race? Hold up a second. Adam was a man. Eve was a woman. Oh, well, I mean, I Adam just I posted race. in Maine. If I, I posted in Maine, uh, the, the older cuneiform writings that predate the Bible, and it turns out that this story has been told before and it shows that adam was a, a race not a, well, no, uh, not but, a but i don't care I don't, look the cuneiform may say that that there's two races adam was the first man yeah the, and the, eve was the first woman as in your, the first homo sapiens yeah e e even if even if the cuneiform predated the bible it doesn't mean that it was inspired by god the Bible was inspired by God. We must get to believe the Bible. It was well, invoking, by God. invoking that the Bible was inspired of God doesn't mean it was inspired by God. Doesn't like, don't you believe Satan comes in like a light of an angel? Well, but, see, like but see, here's the problem. Here's the problem with saying that, Brian, is that when you are attempting to make an eternal critique, you must assume the, the certain parts of the worldview you're attempting to make the internal critique of. So if you're going to make an internal critique of the Christian worldview, then you must accept the inspiration of the word. What you also must understand is, is that the, the, the Pentateuch was an oral tradition long before it was ever written down. So while cuneiform may predate the written Pentateuch, it does not predate the oral Pentateuch, which has been, uh, which has been you know, oral tradition since that of Adam. Okay, but doesn't this show that this, uh, the oral tradition wasn't really oral? They just got it from older cuneiform writings and they just plagiarized no, it and made no, some changes? No, it does not. No, because it doesn't even say what the oral tradition says. Well, here's my, here's my thing. No, like, uh, there is no Christian that thinks that Adam is a race. Not a single one. Adam is not a race. Adam is a person.
the first human man. Now, if if, well, if you want to go off the rails, case, if Batman. if you want to go hold on real quick, Texas. If you want to go off the rails and and accuse me of being like a little bit of a false Christian because I believe that Homo sapiens evolved from Homo erectus, right? But I believe Adam was the first Homo sapien, and Eve was the first. Homo sapien. Yeah. yeah. Well, my question well, is well, why well, why, well, why well, Kathleen are you trying to to make it sound as you know this guy was gay? <laughs> was gay? So, uh, <laughs> That's pretty low. So hold on. I want to I wanted to point out something uh there's a in the cuneiform writings this was found. My mother was a changeling. My father I knew not. The brothers of my father loved the hills. My city is as a Perunu. I butchered that word. Apologize. The wilderness Herb, herb field, which is situated on the banks of the Euphrates. My changeling mother conceived me in secret. She bore me. She set me in a basket of. She she set me in a basket of, a basket of rushes with butamen. She sealed my lid. She cast me into the river, which rose not over me. The river bore me up and carried me to a key, the draw of water. Key, the draw of water, took me as the sun and reared me. A key to draw water appointed me as his gardener. While I was gardener, Ishtar granted me for love, and you know the rest. He became king eventually. The uh, but the point is, doesn't that sound like a lot of, like Moses' uh, uh, origin story? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, but then you then the you would have to act, yeah, but then you would have to again, right? There's a couple issues with that because one, in this little picture that you've got, you've given an exact time to Sargon of Akkade, right? You've given an inexact timeline of Moses. You are asserting well, the timeline time? of... Hold on, hold on, hold on. You are asserting that the timeline of Moses is relevant relative to that of a young Earth creationist, and I am not a young Earth creationist. If Moses actually well, happened... Put PCE, not, not, not. Right, right? Like, uh, and, and again, right, you... You don't know whether or not the story of Moses is metaphorical, allegorical, polemic, literal, right? So Sorry, my Moses, response literally. to you is, is that Sargon of Akkad may have certain similarities to Moses, but this does not mean that the story of Moses didn't happen, and this does not mean that Sargon is correct. What did Sargon of Akkad do exactly? I'm not familiar with his. Well, I mean, Sargon, the similarities are just superficial, anyways. Yeah, so just usually he usually he just talks. So usually I mean, it's going to be like similar. Nazis no, I'm I'm coming in on this conversation, and I I'm not going to be interrupted by any of these faggots. Okay, <laughs> so all the similarities are just I'll superficial. Fucking relax, shit, man. Okay? Jeez. And, okay, would you like to go then, dude? Right, oh, you'd have a lot less interruption if you didn't call me a faggot. Hey let's guys, just, let's stop, just continue don't with the get your panning and, and twist. We're doing really good. Yeah, I know. Let's just have a conversation. Really believe in yourself. Look, I believe whoever you. needs to go is going to go. I don't really care about the virtue signaling. I'll call you a faggot again if you want. All right. Who's going to go? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think you know what virtue signaling. I'm just. I don't. I don't. I don't. Just go. Look, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Do you want to go first or shall I? Shall I? How many times do I have to tell you to go? Hey, man, okay, can... as I said, the, the similarities are only superficial. It's about as close as if something like, um, you know, leaving someone in a basket of reeds to float down the uh, river is kind of like the modern day equivalent of leaving a baby in a bassinet uh, on a door stoop, you know, and knocking and running away. I mean, th these type of tropes uh, are, are often kind of reverberated throughout time in different ways. And I don't think that shows any type of literary um, kinship at all, right? If you were going to be very rigorous about this, you would have to show that they were lifted out of historical sources. Now, there's a few ways that historians and textual critics have done this, none of which have e any of you cited. The first way is just to show that it's directly lifted from the passage. For example, there's a very well-known thing in modern Christian textual circles that it's very likely that Matthew and Luke are derivative from Mark. Why do they think this? They proved it by showing that entire passages, word for word, letter for letter, jot for tittle, or not jot for tittle, but uh, alpha for omega, all appear exactly. And that's one way that you can show a literary comparison. 
showing vague similarities is not a way to prove the tr text is derivative well, at more, all. Well, well the, the, the gospels, scholarship. Thank the gospels. Well, I'm the not gospels, atheist, so I know what you're talking about. The gospels, the gospels, um, okay, Flat Earth does not begin and end with scripture. That link that was sent, that's completely false. I can prove that to you biblically if you want. I, I mean, um, I can, this guy makes a pretty compelling uh, evidence. Yeah, but look, look at this. Okay, uh, the Bible <laughs> talks about Flat Earth. The same. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you scripture right now. Hold up. So does the sun revolve around the earth, or does the earth revolve around the uh, sun? Look, let me show you what? something. Isaiah 40 verses 22. There is one who dwells above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. He is stretching out the heavens like fine gauze, and he spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. It's Ecclesiastes 40 verses 22. The circle of the earth, talking like the earth has a circumference. Or a little a circle that can go around it. That's literally in Isaiah 40 verse 22. Okay. I, I just wanted to point out that yeah, Catherine noted that that Moses might be allegorical, but he won't apply that to Jesus, the figure, the historical right. figure. Just noting that. So I I, I want to I want to say something that the etymology of the word ball or sphere is in the Bible next to the word circle, and when they describe the Earth, it is a flat circle, not a uh, ball or sphere. Yeah, Lucky is really butt hurt. He keeps having to hurt a little bit. I'm not butt hurt. He's not. He's still. Also, he's still I also posted uh, a uh, in the main chat from the anal what, raping that he received a little bit ago. Look, none of I that also posted, actually uh, proves anything. None of those appeals to language prove anything. Let me show you why those weak appeals. Let me show you why those weak appeals to language don't prove anything. Look. I mean, is that, we're all uh, modern people. To Listen language. to me. Shut, Sorry. shut up for a second. Shut up for a second. Shut up for a second. Okay. Direct... I'm going to show you why none of that actually matters, and why trying to make weak appeals to language is not going to be enough. Now, in modern times, we know, right, that uh, the the sun does not revolve around the earth. We know it's the other way around, right? But we still use words like sunrise and sunset. We know for a fact. The sun does not rise, and the sun does not set, okay? The sun the doesn't fucking move at all, okay? We use those words, okay, knowing full well that they're false, but we use them as a way to communicate, uh, as a shorthand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you have to prove that these people weren't doing that. What if somebody comes along 2,000 years later and sees that we use the word sunrise? Oh, look, here they are. They used the word sunrise. They must have thought that the sun actually rose. That is a stupid argument. You well, guys that, are just I, shotgunning some of the most terrible. I'm not done yet, bud. I don't know who the fuck you think you are. Yeah, you circle, guys are circle, shotgunning circle some of the most weakest internet atheist filth arguments I, well, I'm that I've not ever atheist, fucking so seen. So I don't talk about. <laughs> yeah, this circle, this circle is also. Um, you guys uh, are fucking here. scrubs, unintellectual, fucking bottom right. feeder internet atheists. That's all that you are. I'm not impressed with you guys. Okay, Straight up. Plan, I, well, I'm not. I'm not an atheist, things. dude. I'm not an atheist. I just don't believe it, Abraham Klaas. So the uh, the point is, the point where I try to make is when you actually look up, this this is not all the scriptures. I can do more. But when you actually look up all the scriptures that says the Bible or the okay, cosmology first, first of the world. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And when you like me, look up all the scriptures and uh, create from the cosmology of how the Bible, because it's pretty consistent throughout the Bible. Even the Christianity is consistent. And you actually uh, build it off of how uh, the universe is created and how what the universe is built, uh, function as and what it looks like. It looks like this picture I posted in main chat. And this is literally, we, if the yeah, Bible so was written by, or inspired by the creator. So many if issues the Bible, with if the, the Bible that you was, just posted. If the Bible no, was got, created, no, if, the, hold on, hold on, if the Bible was created, why is the cosmology so wrong? Why is the cosmology just so wrong? Look, man, look, you've got so many issues with the with the verses that you just posted, right? And here's the issue, right? It's it's amazing to me when people who have never actually read the Bible I mean, I read post the Bible, Bible scriptures so, uh, as something that is supposed to be like, you know, oh my god, look at this, this proves my point. But you don't know what these verses actually mean. You have no context well, uh, to explain, understand what they mean right so for instance so 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 for instance right there it, not moved it can also be seen as firmly established firmly established not moved, not moved. Well, i mean does it really matter 
does, like, it, does it, yeah, it mean, does yeah, on that matter. Firmly established could mean just like it's it's um it talks about bringing glory to God's name and bowing down to Him. It talks about the earth is established, how Jehovah built it, things like that. Well, I mean, I, I don't yeah. think the fear uh, the before God Him, Hinduism, all the God earth, the world greater. shall be stable that it not be moved, right? Now, I understand why if you are looking to bash Christianity, you could sit here and go, so, oh, look, the earth is actually never I, I, I actually don't use this. No, no, that, that, that's not what that verse is saying, because this particular type of verse is repeated all the time, right? Nothing. God is immovable. Right. And when we yeah. say that, we mean that God is continual and consistent. Right? What about we mean all that these he that has established certain things. He has established things for his divine purposes. He has established things for his divine will. And nothing. the same thing when Christ is talking to Peter and he says that this has not been revealed to you by flesh. This has been revealed to you by the Father. And whatever you hold here on earth. I will hold in heaven and whatever you bind here and whatever you loose on earth shall be. And the gates of hell shall not move it. So I'm posting a do, lot of do, scriptures do that, that back up that the, so, uh, dude, I'm posting the, a lot of scriptures that back up the cosmology. Off, that I, the same I don't, I don't even think you've I didn't read post these the scriptures. Same. I did. And like, I, I, I think you're just rapid firing stuff that you do. No, I'm not guys, rapid firing. Dude, 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 hold on a second. Stretch out the heavens, stretch out the heavens. That's it a lot. It doesn't mean that they're physically stretched out. You can't take things. You, it's not. So what, 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 is firmament, what does the firmament mean to you? The what mean? The, I firmament, mean. the firmament mean to you. What, are you to, what, what verse are you talking what, about? What, what does the firmament mean to you? I don't, I don't know. I don't, what, what do you, what do you, I can't hear you properly. I don't you know, I know what the firmament is? The firmament. What do you mean by the firmament? I might use a different word. read a scripture earlier. With Where is the scripture that says the firmament? Okay, God said this. It's got to be Genesis, dude. If you're, look, if you don't know what no, the firmament, firmament is, get into the conversation. Mean, firmament can mean many things, depending on the scripture and what it is used in. It could mean simply to mean the sky. It could mean the heavens, right? Okay, okay. first off, because I, I, I don't use the... King James um, said, then God said, let the there be... in pretty much every translation. It's not in every translation. Um, it's not in the NIV. Can you name a translation it's not in? New World Translation. NIV. Oh, okay, I knew you were the point. Point. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, What's the point of this conversation? Uh, remind me. I, well, I knew that when he said Jehovah. Well, no, well yeah. not necessarily. There's some black Israelites. <laughs> okay, so, so is there a point to this conversation or not? He's trying to say this. No, not really. Everyone's just, everyone's just okay, trying to. Okay, so this is a rabbit hole that it. has no fucking end, no point, exactly. or no yeah. relevance. I mean, I can, show you, I can show you in the Bible where they're using the word circle right next to the word this ball. Is, this, is, this conversation <laughs> is just a continuation of me ass raping Lucky and then other people wanting to ask actual questions. And somehow we have divorced ourselves from that conversation and gone into the flat earth. No, well, no, I don't believe in flat earth, but like the, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is the very fact that the cosmology is so on its face false. This but look, the body did you, here's possible. the problem. No, no, dude, here's, here's the problem, right? Here's the problem is you are attempting to use words in a Hebrew kidding. text, old Hebrew, mind you, to describe concepts that these people didn't understand, right? Well, God speaks they did understand people the in their the ability to understand things, okay? Honest. God speaks to specific people at specific times for specific reasons for his specific purpose, okay? You cannot take the verse, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then go on to read the rest, and then come to the conclusion that God created the universe in 24 hours. If you can make that conclusion, you're an absolute idiot. Okay, I'm not, not I'm everything not in the, the Bible. No, no, listen. Not everything in the Bible is literal. Okay, not everything in the Bible is literal, but when it's talking about the intricacies in great detail and how the universe works and is formed with the earth and all that, that's pretty fucking literal, dude. Yeah. No, Tell me, Genesis, Gen let's, let's, the book of Genesis this is, throughout is the a Bible. polemic book. Let's, Genesis let's, is a polemic book. Not, not exactly. The, the word day that is stated 
does not necessarily mean day in the Hebrew translation. It means an increment of time. The days could have been thousands I un- of I years long. I understand that. Yes, so I it understand can, that. It can, actually, it can actually be a literal account. It just means that there were increments of time. 24-hour days were not a thing when... God no one's saying, no one's saying this, but the, the, the word the there night and day used, gave man the, the word there that's used in, in, in the Hebrew is the word yom, just like they use the day uh, yom kippur. And now it can mean day, but it can also mean things like an age, right? Which is a much greater length of time. And you can, you don't have to look farther than the Hebrew scriptures to show that the word yom has multiple usages. One of which is the is an age. Go ahead and look in the scriptures and see it. Look, another thing, I'll just say this, Kathleen. I wouldn't take these criticisms ser- seriously. I wouldn't even dignify them with responses because these type of criticisms just show that he hasn't even looked for the answers or responses himself mm-hmm. at all. And they're just, they're just, well, can, you show me, after an, can you show me a picture that says opposite? Internet atheist stuff from contradictions to all this stuff. It's just, it's just, it's just, just can you show me? Can you show sad. me scriptures where it doesn't say the earth is flat? Then, like, can you show me evidence? Yeah, the circle of the earth. earth is flat. Literally, the circle of the earth. The circle of the Every earth. Every one of it these things it, going yeah. to hang. No, it doesn't. Hang it, it, Every like, single it, thing it, that you it, derive it comes from your specific interpretation. All no, of which doesn't. are going to be rejected by any Christian uh, in the room. Okay. So it doesn't come you, my, as an atheist, no, I'm best. I'm guessing haven't about. even attempted to purely interpret scripture ever in your life. Couldn't okay, read so. Hebrew or Greek or anything like okay, that. Don't so know the first thing about it. Word "dur" is pronounced. Look, if you keep right? interrupting me, if you keep interrupting you're, me, I'll just have not, you mute. Not, okay, you're not having anything interesting to say, dude. You're literally just uh, ranting, and you haven't brought up any Look, evidence. I'm telling you right now, very kindly, very possible. That if you continue to interrupt me, I will have to have you muted. Yikes! <clears throat> Fire! You have to you have to show some respect, dude. Okay, sure. Well, I mean, like he just asked, did. He just asked, man. Like, like he just did. Any authority to mute you here? Like, did he literally just like he just did? He just showed straight up respect, got it. If he sh- uh, okay, so if he shaped the earth, was to be conveyed. No, Shame, if you keep home. talking to our new friends like this, I'll have to mute you, all right? So just relax. If the shape <laughs> if the shape of the earth was intended to be conveyed as a ball, I'll mute you, the word dur would have been the word as found in Isaiah 22, 18. So the fact that the word, the Hebrew word kug, uh, kug however you pronounce it, is used, the invades, uh, it shows that it wasn't seen as a sphere or a ball it was shown it was shown to be seen as a flat disc wait what's the hebrew word k uh, uh for which one ball or circle circle or flat uh k-h-o-o-g ball or a circle and that's the certain that that infers that it's flat not a, a sphere. ball Ball would be a sphere, and that's D U R E. Okay, I got K U G. So, where did you get flat? O O G. Yeah, I don't have that. Even on Google, I don't have K U G. Hold on, give me a second. I'll look it up. Where did you get flat? From. From the Hebrew word in the Bible. Ball and circle. And you get flat? No, ball. No, I didn't say that. I said there's two words we're talking about. We're talking about dirt or cow. However, you say it. Huh? Yo, touchpad, touchpad spitting facts right there with that picture. Dude, I have no idea how you're getting flat out of that. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that either. It, it's circle. It talks, it's like a circumference almost. You can argue for the Bible putting forward a flat earth, it's fairly easy. But I don't okay, think so be- I, I don't think you understand me. There's two words that we, we use. The word for sphere or ball comes from the word dur. The very fact that when it was describing the earth, right? The very fact that they was describing the earth is not used. The word that means that it's flat is being used versus Brian, I think, I think you should adjust the, address the, the chat right now. What's yeah. the word that it's being used that makes us think it's flat? Uh, ball? <laughs> not ball. I said ball. So you're is saying because, because ball isn't what they chose to use, therefore the, the they word, thought it was flat. 
You no, know, they. So they let me let me just let me just get no, you. No, no, like, no, 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 that's not what I said. The word no, no, no. Earth is not related to the oh, word man. ball. Therefore, he, like man. anybody who speaks English language must think the world straw is straw man. Straw man. What do you mean straw man? Because that's, that's exactly not what I said. That's, what no, you that's said. not what I said. I said there's two words in the Bible. One no, the, the, the English language. The word in the English language for sphere is sphere. The word for the in the English language for the planet is Earth. Okay, and so because the, the word sphere is not being used to describe the planet, we're not naming the planet after a sphere. Therefore, we think it's flat. Okay, so that's we, not what we're looking uh, at. The Bible. Oh, it's not. The, okay, so no, you're not using the language. You're not saying because okay. they're not so, using the word on, ball. Bro. So what? Here's the thing. Here's what you don't understand. <laughs> None of the philosophers declared that they had divine right, and all those words were inspired of God. Your friend. The, the Bible is inspired of God, and the Bible teaches that the earth is a sphere. Yep. No, it doesn't. Because the two words, the two words who are used side by side, when it describes the earth, it describes it as being flat. But when it describes like the what's the word things, that's being used to describe it as flat? I, I told you. Is there you, a Kug. Hebrew word for flat that yes. you're using? Kug. How many times I gotta tell you, dude? Dude, I'm looking up kug, and it like, says here, masculine. Here, here. <laughs> here, Yo, friend. Fry and type it out for us in the chat, and then find the Hebrew word for frisbee and type that out in the, in the chat. <laughs> Got to find that Hebrew word for frisbee. Brian. Do you know what NASA is? <laughs> and see, this could easily be settled by just pointing to a Hebrew letter. So just link a if you look in main chat, if you, main, if you look at main chat, these are the two words. Do right you look up Coog and it relates me to the no, no. CHU? I'm saying link link a lexicon, not your not your little interpretation or whatever like that. I'm saying link us to a web page that has a lexicon that we can give look at its usages. And let's see if that words all the usages are flat. Let's just see what the usages are. Okay. I mean, well, they use both kinds. They just, when it's describing the earth, they use All the I'm flat. seeing is that it means just, circle. Just put, look, look, listen, just be rigorous. Look, if you want to sit up here and you want to criticize this stuff and you want to do so, do so. Try to do so in the most rigorous academic way possible. Post it's also a word that's used for horizon. Just, just I mean, do it. But, it's very simple okay, yeah. to do. Yeah, that's fine. But shouldn't you be able to counter these things as well? well this that, one here is saying... I'm not going to counter like something unless you actually chug. bring up something that's a problem. But it's phonetically spelled Coog. I don't know what the fuck. Not to help. It's saying to draw around. Yeah, flat. And they could have used the other round, word, door, round, which, if, which... If one of the usages is round, you're going to be in tr trouble. Because we, we, the word round doesn't always imply flat. So if if I look at that word and one so of its that's, usages that's, is round, there's two you're words. Fucked. That's where you're wrong. There's two words. There's two words that are used in the Bible. One to uh, denote a round word. ball, ball, and one that says flat, a circle. Wait, seriously? So they use one that says a ball. Yeah, but ball. things are both things that we consider round, and they use all, both it words. Doesn't imply that they're it, whether it's round or not. Doesn't imply like a plate is round. Okay. So it doesn't matter. That That's not going to prove anything. Irvin, well, Irvin, a plate um, is flat. The word round, the, 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 he's trying to imply like the word dead. round only has a very specific I'm implying that the fact they use two different words to describe the exact same sensation phenomenon. I'm in the middle of my sentences and you just interrupted <clears> me. Why, why do you continue to do that? I told you, I told you if you keep doing that, there's going to be a problem. Just stop. Just wait till I finish. I'm not that long-winded. Yeah, you can see. You can. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. So you, 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 again, so again, getting back to what I was saying without being interrupted. Okay, that the word round doesn't always imply spherical. It does not. Okay, the word round can apply to a plate. Okay, we see square plates and we see round plates. So round being its connotation does not imply whether it's flat or spherical. And I want to see a lexical uh, linked le lexicon into the into the chat here, not just something you've cut and pasted or not just whatever you've typed in the chat. Okay, no one is under any fucking reason to take any of that seriously. Provide the lexicon and let's see if if the usage of that word can only be used unanimously as flat. That's all I want to know. You it's provide not, that. We'll have that's not the case at all. I just looked it up in Strong's. Yeah, I already 
knew it wasn't. I just wanted him to hang himself. Okay. All right, cool. Actually, you wouldn't be able to hang himself because you have to t- take both words in position. <laughs> just because one lexicon says this, there would be a reason for each word using. Now, the confusion could be with today's translation. And just because it's in a lexicon, that's just an appeal to authority. So we have to say you have two words being used in two different ways. <laughs> no, 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 you just called the lexicon an appeal to authority. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You have two different words. You have two different words. Right, using a, a to describe two different things, two different phenomenons. One is drawing a fucking circle, and the other is literally a ball or a sphere. And the one that is hey, using a ball or a sphere Seamus. is not describing the earth. Appealing to a lexicon is just an appeal to an authority. No, appeal, appeal, that, appeal. That, appeal to a, I didn't say that at all. Listen, what's ridiculous is, is the <laughs> fact that you're ignoring both uh, sides. That's Listen ridiculous. to me. Listen to me. It's just an appeal to authority. Shaman. A lexicon. A lexicon is going to have common usages, right? They even have lexicons that are independent of certain books. That means you could have a lexicon the way that it's used within this book, right? They have lexicons for the actual Bible. Those are known as concordances, okay? And they will show you every which way that word was used within that singular text, okay? Then you have a larger lexicon which shows the way that that word's used within the host language, okay? Now, again, If we go and look at the lexicon, okay, and the host language has a usage in connotation that does uh, does not mean flat. That means that that word can be used to to non-flat objects. Your argument fails. And let me go ahead and stop you where you are so you don't have to do any Googling. The lexicon usage does not solely have a connotation of flat. You're wrong. (laughs) It's like a leprechaun can also be a Keebler elf, but it doesn't always mean that it's a Keebler elf. A leprechaun could be all sorts of other little things. Just Not to mention, the word flat in English doesn't even so have I just those posted a, I just posted a, hold on, I just hold posted on, uh, hold on. the lexicon. It doesn't say anything about round or globular at all. Okay, we'll, exa- we'll examine that here in a second. Let me make one last point. You're going to be hard pressed to do so because the word flat in English doesn't have those connotations. We say things like that person has a flat nose. Now, do we mean bereft of any third dimensional category? We don't. Okay. We mean, we mean something completely different. So the word flat in English doesn't even have those type of connotations. Now, let's I go just ahead posted and the other that. word let's too. Go ahead and bring it back up. I just posted the first word uh, in the lexicon for Okug, or Okug, however you want to say it. it. It just means drawing a circle or around, like or a circle around the uh, uh, something. And then the second word means pretty much uh, a ball or some kind of sphere. And, then, and it's, okay, so I find it interesting they didn't use ball or sphere to describe the earth. But they did use the one that said round? No, they use the one that said circle or drawing a flat circle. Because when you draw something, it, it's two dimensional. Would you agree? What when you draw something? Yeah, yeah when I you mean, draw a circle. It's, it's two dimensional when you when you draw something. Yeah, when, and the word they use was a two dimensional for the circle. Just show me this. Just show me the link. Which one are you talking to? I, I you link the one that says D U W R. D U W R. Is that the one I should be clicking here? The, that's the one that says ball, and the one above it says the one that says circle. Do you not realize that how back I don't then, see the one. How would they have it. a concept of the shape of the earth? How would they even know past what they could see with their own eyes? Because it, they wouldn't. But if it was inspired by God, they would. Yeah, if it was inspired by God, they know the earth was round. Oh, because he, he yeah. Okay, I just reposted that link, by the way. I was inspired by God. I don't know. Okay, there's a pr- problem. Uh, I, I thought so you didn't post a link to a concordance. You posted a link to a uh, link to a lex. I mean, you did post a link to a lexicon. You posted a link to a concordance. There's a difference. I've already told you what the difference is, and you didn't post okay, a link give me, to a lexicon. Give me a give me a good link to your lex your personal lexicon. That's not my responsibility to do. Yeah, that's not your responsibility, huh? So, 
I mean, if you're making claims, it, that's your responsibility. It's just that simple. I mean, I mean, you well, you're, you're, you're saying this is not. You you're saying this is not. So you're listen, saying this is not good enough. Listen, so I'm asking for a better you link. You need to post from a lexicon, not from a concordance. A concordance only shows you usages within the text. Okay, it doesn't show you usages from the larger language. Okay, and I think what's really important is to show the link uh, usage of, from the, the larger language itself. Okay, because the lexicon is always going to presuppose someone's interpretation. And so that's just going to be straight question begging right off the bat. So let's go yeah. ahead and just look at every connotation that that word has in the, in the host language. And you don't do that by concordances, you do that by a lexicon. So go ahead and do that. So would you agree with, as the Bible lexicon for the studylight.org? Would you agree with that one? I'll agree with anyone as long as it's a lexicon and not a concordance. I don't really give a shit either way. To me, it makes sense that the way they describe the earth is how they saw it, which would be standing on the ground, using their eyes and looking about. I don't know why that's so hard to understand that they're going to go by what they see. Why does it have to be some interpretation from God? And you think God came down and said, oh, by the way, the earth is the shape of a spear or the earth is flat? Come on. Well, it didn't come down. It's, called, it's why it's inspired of God. He inspired them to write it. Right, and what does the word inspired mean? Influence them, giving them the idea no. of it to write it down. Why would how is, It's is a creative such a interpretation. Concept? It is inspired means a creative interpretation. What? <laughs> J.K. Rowling's was inspired to write Harry Potter. Exactly. You look up the definition of inspired again, and it will have the word creative in it. You inspire someone to do something, you influence them to do it. It's, 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 you give them a creative impulse to do something. So saying that God exactly. inspires creative. someone to do something, so he gave they them, were, yes, but he, yeah. he would give them an impulse to think. The earth okay. may be So sphere. what I'm getting at, if you'll let me finish, is that yes. it doesn't say that the Bible was dictated from God. It says it was inspired. So that would mean that there would be a license for creativity and then to interpret things the way they perceived it. Yes, but God would not allow something incorrect to be put into the scriptures. Why would he allow something like that to happen? If well, if so why does he uh, so why does he mention books in the Bible when those those books that he's referencing aren't even in the Bible? I want some I, where are you talking about? I want, I'd like to see some sources. Why, why are there multiple Bibles for you to cherry pick through or when exactly. <laughs> Multi there's multiple translations of the Bible. Yeah. Gee, I thought you said you were well read on the Bible. I know the Bible to a degree. Okay, so then not, you would know not, what I'm you would saying. know what then I'm, you I'm would not. know then you would know what scripts and verses I'm referring to when they reference books that are not in the Bible. No, I actually don't. I'm not saying I'm some super genius. I know well, you should at least have a base knowledge of the, the Bible, Bible, then. I, I can have a base knowledge of the Bible without knowing them referencing other works. It seems like a very select few areas. I'd like to see some areas. If you can show me that, I'd love to see it. Oh, fuck. Can you not show me it? Yeah, I'm kissing back to my computer. Okay, I'm just... Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying I'm some super genius. I read the Bible and I look at what's in the scriptures. I'm yeah, not, I know, I, but you're implying that there's some inerrancy that that ne is necessitated within the the Bible, the Bible, not many translations of a Bible, and so you're you're convicted to this idea same. that it, there isn't going to be any problems. There's not going to be any differences. Uh, in God would know it. There's no problems within the translation. Yeah, you got to find a good translation. I understand that the human um, carrying over the translation of the Bible would have problems. I understand that. I'm saying that I think that the um, I think that the Bible that that the reason the Bible survived for so long is because it's been influenced by God. God has been letting the Bible. Um, he's been he's been making sure his word survives for humans. 
Oh, it's just a false priest class out of uh, the Chaldeans who have been tricking people for the last 4,000 years. Did you just say the Chaldeans? Uh, or that's what uh, that's what the Babylonians called them, but they were they go by name. Okay, there you go. I just posted yeah. something for you, and it shows right there the books books mentioned but not found in the Bible. So there you go. Okay, Exodus. Let me just let me fix some looks. Again, I mean, I don't find any of these arguments to be persuasive as, at all because any one of these, th let me show you why I think there's, and you can take this one. Let me explain to you why I think these type of arguments are terrible. The reason why these type of arguments are terrible is because each one of them is going to presuppose a specific interpretation, right? Like this needs to be a Every single time you're going to engage a Christian, they're always going to dispute that interpretation. So what does the conversation devolve into? It devolves into this. My interpretation is better than yours. This is the way the text should be read. This is what it really means. No, my interpretation is better than yours. This is how the text is read, it's what it should really mean. And it's an intractable argument. I, in my opinion, better arguments are going to be philosophical arguments. They're going to be arguments that aren't cast depending on some interpretation of some text right they're going to take commonly accepted features like omnipotence and omniscience and all these things that uh christian theists are going to grant from the get-go and then try to uh, derive problems from that so they're going to start from accepted grounds and then move on to to easily identifiable problems except for the arguments that you're starting from do not start from accepted grounds and all those problems are going to hang on whether or not those interpretations are correct Ultimately, those type of arguments are just not interesting. Let me tell you another thing that I think. Ultimately, even if, just, just for the sake of argument, even if you were to show something like the Bible has a contradiction or the Bible has a scientifically inaccurate statement, just for the sake of argument, even if I were to grant you that, that does not disprove the Christian God. Okay? The only way that that could disprove the Christian God is with the hidden premise. The hidden premise would be if the Christian God exists, he would uh, necessarily make the Bible <laughs> inerrant. Okay? Now that needs to be backed up. Okay? But that can't be backed up by anything other than philosophical argument. Okay? And you're going to have to appeal to God's motives. Now, what happens when you appeal to God's motives? You're either going to have to show that God has good reasons to not allow those errors to be in there. But likewise, someone could argue that God might have good reasons to allow the errors in there. Like, for example, this is, just, this is just one proposal, okay? I'm just showing you what they could do. They could say something like, what if God's goal wasn't to create a scientifically accurate document, but, but it was uh, to create a document that was the most efficacious of belief for the most amount of people throughout time? That was the so, goal. Now, if, so that was the, if that was the goal, I'm not done speaking yet. I don't know how you got an indication. Wait your turn. So if that were the case, okay, if that was his motive, if that was his desire, then it wouldn't matter if there were errors in it, okay? So what I'm saying is 